Well, hello there again, everybody. This is UXW Bill, and I just wanted to talk to you about something that I found recently, something I discovered on a piece of hardware that I thought was pretty cool. Some of you might remember my uh, video about rebuilding Dallas semiconductor clock and uh, non-volatile memory modules with external batteries, which itself was based on the advice of the advice presented by someone else's website. Well. We've been busy at work recently, doing a lot of uh, overhauling of computer equipment and things like that, and so I inherited some free stuff from work. Free stuff from work is always fun. There are a couple of 100 megabit network switches and stuff like that that were basically given to me as a bonus, and other things like this UPS right here that I was basically told to make disappear. They didn't care how I did it, they just wanted it gone. So inherited this trip light UPS which works fine but really uh, wasn't very professionally adapted you know they did the best they could in light of not being able to get the original batteries for it and so I've got a set of batteries with it that while they're not new they do still hold a charge and then I have this over here this is, uh, this is an APC Smart UPS 2200 that's got some problems the nice thing about both these UPSs, big UPSs like this typically have a true sine wave output that uh, very closely mimics, if not exactly matches, the output from a normal AC outlet that's being driven by the big power grid out there. And so these things can be used to run things that ordinarily would not be a good idea to run from a UPS because the little motors or transformers in those devices might overheat on modified sine wave or even square wave power. But these have true sine wave inverters. Unfortunately, these APC units they have a couple of these, and all the ones that were made in the U.S. are still going. The ones of these that were made in India are still going. But this and several of the others were made in China. And I'm sorry to say, and some people might take objection to this, but the ones that have made in China, they've all died. The ones that have been made in China, they've all died in some way or another. Most of the time they just became lifeless. This one doesn't charge its batteries properly, won't calibrate itself, won't do anything that it's supposed to. And I don't know if I can fix it or not, but I thought it was worth a shot. And one of the things that I decided to do, you can see I've got it plugged in here. Um, one of the things that I decided to do was invest on, you know, take the assumption that I could fix this and invest in an APC smart slot management card. This is an old one from eBay that cost about 20 bucks. And I figure if nothing else, I can sell it on and recoup my investment in it. But if I could get this UPS to work properly, and the inverter in it does work properly, it just doesn't want to calibrate itself or charge its battery properly, I thought that I might have a neat little find here. And, you know, something to keep me busy for an hour or two, maybe. Now, if you're going to work on your own UPS, again, these are high power devices, high current, dangerous, nasty waveforms in there and things like that. These things could really bite and hurt you. In fact, I would say the only thing that might be more dangerous than these to work on is a microwave oven, and even that's somewhat debatable because a microwave oven, although it has a very high voltage output on the output side of its transformer, it doesn't deliver that much current, although the current it does deliver is certainly more than enough to prove instantly fatal if you get on the wrong side of it. But this thing, this thing should be treated with the same kind of caution, and I don't suggest that you go into one of these unless you have a very good idea of what you're doing. But to get to the point of this video, I saw something really neat on this smart, sm smart slot card, and I just thought that I would talk about it briefly here because this is kind of a cool idea. And I don't know why Dallas Semiconductor never thought of this, other than whoops, other than they knew they could probably get the customer for selling them uh, new Dallas modules when the battery finally ran down. But this little card is basically, oh, there's a spider in there, a single board computer. There's an AMD PCNet ISA 10 megabit Ethernet adapter in here, and there's also an AMD 8186 CPU that's clocked at 40 megahertz. And in a testament to what good quality efficient programming can do, this card's built-in web server actually responds very quickly. But this thing is capable of exerting quite a bit of control over the UPS and also reporting a lot of data about it by talking with the onboard, I believe it's an 8032 that APC uses that's been flashed with their own custom firmware. But this thing has a clock and calendar on it, and this is, this is where the cool part comes in. 
As you can see here, there's this yellow assembly, and I'm going to stop the video for a moment here so I can let the camera refocus itself, and then I'll talk about this thing some more and why I think it's so cool to tell you just what a huge nerd I really am. All right, I think I got it to focus here. It only focuses once per uh, every opening of the shutter to record a video. So what this thing is, this is an ST Microelectronics Timekeeper. They also have another one. I forget what it's called, but there's Timekeeper, which actually has a clock and NVRAM on it, and then there's another one that's just non-volatile RAM. Anyway, the neat thing about these is they're a two-part assembly. There's the actual timekeeping chip, which is soldered to the board separately, and according to ST Microelectronics, that prevents any stress from being applied to the built-in battery. And then they call these modules, they call these modules either cap hats or snap hats, which is kind of a clever name, isn't it? Now the cap hats are permanently sealed, like a, uh, like a Dallas module would be, and the only time I've ever seen one of those is on an IBM store loop adapter for microchannel and it had a timekeeper on it that was a, that was a cap hat style. Uh, ST Microelectronics has published a very lengthy article on just how to figure the lifetime of these modules and all sorts of technical information about them. That was an interesting skimming and maybe an interesting read if you had a better background in electrical engineering than I do. But the snap hats are so named because the battery actually snaps off of them. This yellow cap here can actually be removed at the end of its useful lifetime and replaced with another one to go again, which is really a pretty cool idea. I would have to give major props to whoever thought of that at ST Microelectronics because that's a neat idea and I can only wish that Dallas Semiconductor would have done something similar with their modules so you didn't have to cut them open so violently and attach an external battery to them to get them to go again. It would also, you know, provided the snap hat part is no longer available, it would also make it easy if you can determine what pin goes where because there's also a quartz crystal in this upper module, this yellow thing. It would make it easy to determine where you need to hook up the battery as well as the quartz oscillator. And ST Microelectronics even goes so far as to say that you can hook these things, you can take the battery off and hook it up again with these things hot so they'll maintain their non-volatile memory and they'll only lose, you know, however much time it takes you to change that snap hat module. Anyway, that's about all there is to this video. It's probably quite a bit longer than it needs to be and it probably confirms to some of you just what a huge nerd I really am, but I don't care. I just thought this was kind of a cool find and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. So there you have it. And thank you very much for watching. Now to answer the other question that some of you are going to ask, why would a normal, sane, rational person want a large UPS or standby power supply? Well, it's a good question. And really, I don't have a great answer for it other than to say that you could use one of these things if they're cold start capable, as these two units are. That is to say they can start up and run without uh, incoming line power. You could use them as an impromptu backup power source to run various loads in your house during a time when you don't have utility power. You can also use these things to buffer the output of a generator. Or you can just plug ridiculous things into them and take heart in knowing that these things are big enough and heavy enough to run ridiculous loads off of their battery. I used to have an old APC 1200 volt amp UPS. Um, thing had dead batteries in it, but it too, it was from the late 80s, it had a monstrous true sine wave inverter in it, very nice piece of equipment that unfortunately I recycled because I just didn't have any room for it and I didn't need it at the time, but with a whole big bank of car batteries arranged in series and parallel to give it the ability to satisfy its current demands, it would it would stand a washing machine running off of it. it. It would struggle during the spin cycle, during the first kick up there. It didn't really like to start the machine from a dead stop, but it would do it. It would it would kick and it would make unhappy noises, but it wouldn't blow up and it would eventually get the motor started. The other thing that you could do with it is it would run a room air conditioner. Now it really wasn't happy about doing that. In fact, it was even less happy than it was running the washing machine. But again, it would kind of sort of do it, and I would imagine that either one of these two would probably do the same thing with ease. But of course, if you attempt something like this, safety is very important because you're dealing with potentially lethal voltages, very high amounts of current that can weld things instantaneously, which, you know, 
aside from causing potential collateral damage, could certainly hurt, burn, or even blind you. So again, folks, don't mess around with stuff like this unless you really know what all the risks and uh, potential rewards are before you even think of getting started because you can really end up in a dangerous situation with one of these and you don't want to go there.